Speaking of technology and healthcare, let's transition into our next topic now. We're going to be talking about a robot that is going to be brushing your hair. And I know, I know it sounds a little weird, but this is a research coming out of MIT and Harvard. It was a joint effort. And the reason they did this is because nurses actually spend a lot of their time taking care of patients, like their personal health. And, you know, personal hygiene, like brushing your hair is actually a part of that. Turns out they're actually spending like 18 to 40% of their time doing this kind of work. And, you know, if anything, again, this past year has shown us a lot about the world. One being how essential nurses are and the work that they do. So if you can alleviate some of their workloads so that they can focus on more pressing matters, it would be great. So that's the problem they want to address here. Again, robots for hair brushing might seem a little insane. It was cool for me to actually find out that Panasonic had done similar work back in 2011. They created a robot that could wash your hair and blow dry it, and it was intended for the elderly, just allowing them to take care of themselves in their own homes. So it's, it's not too far out of the realm of reality. But hair is very difficult to, like, analyze and manipulate, if you I, know that. I um, actually think about a coworker I used to work with when I was at Form Labs. Shane Whiten, he's got an awesome YouTube channel called Stuff He Made does. He's I like love his videos. Probably one of the best engineering YouTubers that I can watch now. So go check him out. But he made two versions of a robot, mm-hmm. like multi-axis of freedom, robotic arm that could cut hair. And he talked about how complicated it was, like all the dynamics of hair, because it's actually just like millions and millions of fibers in one place. It's not... Um, not like cutting through a gel or a material that's stiff. It's actually a ton of fibers. And he had a lot of challenges making this robot to cut hair. So I I imagine they encountered a lot of these same issues here trying to brush it. You would be absolutely right because it's different lengths of hair, different, you know, density. And like my hair is curly and wavy and your hair is completely straight. So you have to make a system that can analyze and come up with a solution that meets that hairstyle's needs, right? Every head of hair is different. Exactly. Every head of hair is different. So that that's one of the things that they had to overcome. And they made a mathematical algorithm that analyzes bundles of small fibers and it comes up with a way on how to best manipulate it. What's cool about this is that even if they never really go commercial with this idea, this can be used in industry, like in the textile industry. So it like their research has so much merit that it's not just for the healthcare sector. So it can be applied to different things as well. It's intended for hair combing, mm-hmm. you know, hair fibers, but anywhere where you're looking at manipulating tons of fibers, this same algorithm exactly. can be reapplied there. That's pretty interesting. 100% right. So and you mentioned like different hair types. Yours is curly, mine is straight. How would this algorithm compare like how to brush your hair versus mine? So it... Again, it, it has the algorithm tells it like how to analyze the situation and the brush that it uses has sensors giving it feedback when it makes contact. These are okay, so it sensors. knows how hard it's brushing. Exactly. Your hair. It knows how hard it's brushing. It's brushing your hair. So it knows that if you have curly hair like mine, doing a lot of long strokes is probably not the best idea because you're going to run into knots or you're going to stress it out too much. Whereas your hair that's straight, long, long strokes is completely fine. Okay. The way it reassure, reassures itself is that it has a closed feedback loop control system. What that means is that from the sensor input, it's reanalyzing its process and going, hmm, it seems like we were a little bit too stiff here. We're getting a little resistance. So let's go lighter on the brush and maybe okay. let's change direction and how, how long we're doing the strokes. Okay, so they've, they're using this closed loop feedback system that tells them, you know, this is good, this is too much, this is too mm-hmm. light. Um, I mean... When you say like you're encountering resistance, that's like a pretty clinical term. Resistance means like they're yanking your hair out, right? Yes. So have they like tested this on humans yet? How are they going to like translate what they found in like a relationship between force and how much that hurts? Because like force is pain when you're brushing your hair. Yes. So that, that that's a great question. And so far they've only tested on wigs. But uh, one of the things they want to address is pain. Because like you're saying, the last thing you want to do is yank on someone's hair. The thing about pain, though, is that it's not objective. It's not one scale that, like, everyone is like, yeah, that's exactly how I feel, too. What might feel like a two for you might feel like an eight for me. Okay. So pain is subjective, and they have to do human trials to really fine-tune that system, which they haven't done yet. Okay. They hope to do it soon, though. Well, it works really well on wigs. Um, Hopefully, it continues to work well with humans. And I, I like this specific application of robotics, which people call cobotics, actually. Mm-hmm. 
um, collaborative robots to tick up some of the repetitive tasks. Um, that's one of the most promising applications of automation and technology as I see, because if you're a nurse and you don't have to spend, what'd you say, up to 40% of your time combing people's hair, you can focus on providing really personalized care and interacting with all the patients because you're not spending all your time brushing. Exactly. And the, the automation effort isn't replacing the nurse. It is helping the nurse. Yeah. Allowing them to do what they do best. So that's awesome. Yeah. I'm a huge fan too. 